Hello, Grade Eights, and welcome to Lesson 3.1, Organizing and Presenting Data Found in Your Textbook on page 92. All right, yes, I went from Lesson, sorry, Chapter 1 to Chapter 3, but you'll understand why as the year goes on. And the goal for today is to organize and present data to solve problems and make decisions. In other words, we're applying what we've learned since your primary days, okay, grade three and onward, okay, everything we're going to present here you've seen, but I'm going to review it anyway. So let's start with your friend and mine, that's right, Mr. Bar Graph. Now, Bar Graph, you've seen it all before, all right, so a graphical display of data using bars of different heights good way to show relative sizes okay in this case you're looking at fruit now also in this case it's color coded okay so you see you have the apple which is red orange is orange etc and so on and so forth and from this you can just look okay where's the highest bar boom right there blueberry highest okay least is grape okay very simple and you've been doing this for a lot of years so this is nothing new but still take good notes write write it and write down the example okay this is great for studying okay that's why I do this okay so let's continue next one on our list is a pictograph all right a way of showing data using images all right we've uh, gone on from this to an infographic type of scenario all right but this is the genesis of that your basic pictograph each image stands for a certain amount in this case 10 apples is one full apple and half an apple is five apples. This is sales um, per month. Now, problem with this is it's not very accurate. It looks nice, looks very pretty, okay? However, it's not very accurate. So you'll see 10 apples, 20 apples, but what if you want to, uh, what if you want to depict 22 apples, 27 apples, you can't. So you have 10 apples, 5 apples, you can't show just one or two, okay? So it gives you a general idea of what's going on, but again, not very accurate. Looks nice, not very accurate, okay? So we continue. Now, stop at any point to take some notes. Um, take this down, take the example down, and definitely, definitely write this down over here. That's really important, okay? So your pros and cons to using this. Very pretty, not very accurate. All right, so let's continue on to another common one, a line graph. All right, graph shows the information is connected in some way, such as a change over time. You're gonna see a lot of line graphs when you're talking about something over time, how things change over time. What is a trend over time? All right, so you see this is from 1975 to 2002. And what is it? The average price of one gallon of gas. Yes, it's an American graph. They do things in gallons. We do things in liter. Just remember, four gallons is one liter. Okay, so, sorry, it's the other way around. One gallon is four liters. Got that? One gallon, four liters. All right, to all my American friends watching this, that's the conversion. All right, so, these are connected. Connected dots, essentially, and you see that you have an upward trend. All right, over time, over however many years, we have an upward trend in the price of gasoline. You connect the dots, and this is talking about one piece of information. All right, what is the price of gas over time? Okay, price, time, and there's your trend. All right, an upward trend, more expensive gas over time. All right, again, feel free to pause whenever you want because. We have a few more things to talk about, and one of which is very similar to a line graph, without the line, is a scatter plot. All right, a graph of plotted points that show the relationship between two sets of data. In this case, it's temperature, temperature, time of day. All right, well, actually, no, sorry, not time of day. It's at noon every day, but here's the temperature at noon for a local ice cream shop. They want to track how much they sold over the past 12 days given the temperature. All right, so here are their sales, and there is the temperature. Okay, so we plot all of these 
on the line, oh, sorry, in the graph, all right? And there's no line here. They're not connected, okay, but you're seeing a trend. Essentially, the trend says the warmer it is, more sales. But the relationship isn't perfect because you'll notice it's hotter here, but there's less sales. Same here, all right? Not perfect, but generally, you'd like, you're looking at this graph saying, well, the hotter it is, the more sales. All right, once you get to high school, you're going to notice, uh, you're not going to notice, you're going to have to do it, that uh, you're going to, um, using something called the line of best fit. So basically, you're going to go through and just kind of go right in between these, and that's a really bad line. You're using a ruler, okay? Line of best fit basically goes right through all of these, right in between all of these, okay? And we can go through this, but again, this is something you'll be doing in grade 9, all right? But that's basically how you're looking at um, the data from a scatter plot. Line of best fit going through everything, everything. But for now, just basically know that it's a relationship between two sets of data. In this case, it's sales and temperature. More sales, the hotter it gets. All right? So again, write this down. Pause if you need to. And uh, we'll go on. Next one, stem and leaf plot. The best way I can describe this is as follows. 32, it says 32 is split into 3 and 2. Okay, here's your stem. Okay, there's your leaf. But what this is trying to say, here's your ordered numbers right here. Okay, here's your tens. 10, tens, 15, 16. Okay, right there, 15, 16. So there's 15, there's 16. 20s, 21, 23, 23. 21, 23, 23. Okay, if I were to put a test together, and you will all this year do amazingly well but in this case here if this was out of 45 we'll say okay you can look back at this data and say well how did everybody do well aside from being a very small classroom you're going to say that most of them got in the 20s which is not so good but that's a way to look at this data all right it's just take this data break it down this way and look at it where's my biggest grouping well it's right here in the 20s okay and I'm just assuming it's a test out of 45 but that's just a way of looking at it okay but how do you place it well here's 32 3 right there and the 2 down to there okay very simple when you really think about it okay so next next all right I think this is the last one. Oh, hey what's going on here all right so Here's the last one here. There we go. All right, so. All right, beautiful. All right, last one uh, for review, the circle graph or the pie chart or the pie graph, okay? Uh, a special chart that uses pie slices to show relative sizes of data. All right, good way to show relative sizes at a glance, all right? Here is how much one would spend, all right? So of all the money one would make, most of it goes into rent. All right, then followed by food, and then followed by utility, okay? And you have 9% of your income left for fun stuff. But this is a good way of organizing everything and looking at a glance and seeing what takes up the biggest chunk. In this case, it's 48%, which goes to rent, all right? So either you get a better job or get somewhere that doesn't cost as much to live. That's what you take from this. All right, so we continue. Now, if you need a break, pause, stop now, and um, we'll come back, come back to it uh, because we're going to quickly go through the question in the textbook and I'll explain, and then we'll review tomorrow. And actually, I will post something on actually how to make one of these things, okay? Using a compass and percentages and all that kind of fun stuff. So I will put a link onto here. All right, so pause. Go take a drink. Relax. Come back in a few minutes, and we'll continue. All right, we're back. We're good? Good. All right, so question from the textbook is as follows. Um, of this fundraising that has been done, this is all the money raised from various 
fundraising activities that a town had done. Okay, here's all the money raised. Here are the events. All right, so it's asking what type of fundraising was most successful. These are all different types. Okay, you can group these into different categories. All right, so first of all, what you want to do is you want to organize the data into three or four categories. Okay, if you'll notice, there's a couple of a thons. All right, all right, there's some athletic events. Oh, look, there's another a thon. Okay, there's some talent here concert, talent show, CD sales, sales of books, of you know, raffles, wash. Okay, and break those down into appropriate categories and then you can compare. You can construct a graph and what conclusions can you make from your graph? I'm going to spoil the surprise for you. Here, here's what it looks like. Put together ourselves a bar graph. Okay, there's all the money raised in our categories, athletics, sales, entertainment, contests, and other. All right? It's okay to use other because there's a lot of categories here, okay? But the majority of them could be broken down into those four, okay? Contest, entertainment, sales, and athletics from all of these, okay? And then the rest are into other. And clearly, all the others didn't make as much money, okay? And what can you take from this graph? First of all, what graph do we use? Use the bar graph. Okay, we broke it down into five categories, and these are the categories. We can see how much money was raised, close to $7,000 for the highest uh, amount, which is entertainment, all right? The highest grossing fundraiser was entertainment, close to 7000 by a lot, and we can see that here. Okay, it doesn't need to be color-coded, so a lot came from entertainment, okay? And we said that entertainment raised the most amount, Okay, and the sales raised the sales, whatever sales, bake sales, garage sales, whatever, made the least amount of money. All right, and we can see that just by the graph. Okay, and it's pretty easy to tell. All right, so basically, we took all of that data that we were given, broke it down into five categories, using a bar graph, and the conclusion we made was all the money that came in, the most of it came from entertainment. Okay, maybe they got some big acts come in okay maybe Justin Bieber and his all of his friends came in to do a show in the small town raise a bunch of money okay so there you have it ladies and gentlemen um, I hope you take some good notes it's a lot I know that's why it's on video that's why it's on YouTube because you can go back to it whenever you want and I'll be checking notes so take good notes uh, be thorough use it as a study guide it's gonna stay up here it's not going anywhere um, but you'll always have this as a reference, okay? So let's go through this uh, on next day, we'll review, and we'll go to work, all right? Thanks, guys. We'll talk.